Prototyping is a challenge for beginners and advanced users alike. Finding the first set of good models quickly is what advanced users want to do. And getting to a suitable model, which fits your task, is often the problem for beginners. Both of these challenges can be solved with the auto model feature so that the beginners can create a model with confidence. And for the advanced users, it saves a lot of time getting started. So let's see how this works. The first step is to select some data. You can choose some data you have in your repository, or you can import it from a file or database. For most of this demo, we will use one of the samples, which gets shipped with the AI Studio. A good choice is the Titanic dataset, which has 1,300 examples and 12 columns of different data types with a good mix of numeric and polynomial attributes. As you can guess from the name of the dataset, we have a collection of known information about the passengers who embarked on the famous maiden voyage of the RMS Titanic from England to New York. Besides personal data like age, gender, and number of family members on board, the example set also contains information about the class in which they traveled, the ticket price, and where they boarded the ship. Now with this data, the most interesting challenge is to try and model the potential survival of each passenger. Therefore, the task at hand is a classification problem. Our label or a target variable is the attribute named survived. In this next step, we are asked to identify which value of the label is, for us, the important one. In our case, we have only two classes and we're interested in class yes. You can also rename the classes or reduce the number of values by mapping several classes to the same value. Now, this next page is particularly interesting and important. Every attribute of our example set is shown here with a tick box, a traffic light, and a quality chart. The status colors mean the following. Red should most likely be excluded from the model creation process. Orange, to make sure to double check if you really want to select this attribute as input. Green, this seems to be an essential input for model generation. Selecting the correct inputs for modeling is important to make sure you include every relevant aspect, but it's also important to exclude unimportant features that only increase the runtime. So make sure to review this carefully. Here on the right, we have our information panel, which will help us understand the quality chart better. The quality chart gives you an indication of the correlation between an attribute and a label, the ID-ness, the stability, and the fraction of missing values in a column. As mentioned, you should prefer columns with low values for missing, stability, and ID-ness. A lot of missing entries will not help to find patterns for explanations. So that's a no-brainer. Now you can see why cabin is flagged to be excluded as clutter. Stability is high if the values in an attribute show little to no variation. Again, it is not helpful for pattern identification in that case. ID-ness tells you how much a column is like a unique identifier, which means each value appears only once in an attribute and therefore does not help find patterns. A random ID like the ticket number or something as specific as the name of a passenger is of that type. Lifeboat is flagged orange, which tells us that this is something where the studio is unclear if it's a good idea to select this attribute. Missing is high because most people didn't make it to one, and therefore these values are missing. At the same time, the correlation between this attribute and the target, which we want to predict, is very high. So we might have a good proxy here. Our challenge is to predict if someone will survive, assuming the incident has not happened yet, but the information on lifeboats is a result of the disaster. So, due to the causality of the correlation, we have to exclude the attribute. Now on this page, we get a pre-selected subset of suitable models for our task and the size of our example set. For some of them, regularization or optimization is very useful to get a better performance. So we can choose to include this automatically here. If you're concerned about the runtime, you can untick it, but it will be best to leave it on. Besides creating the models with some helpful analytics on each, we will also create a general correlation matrix and an overview of the importance of the columns. If you're not interested in that, you can turn this off here, but we won't, so we can show you what it looks like. All right, now let's hit the Run button. This will take some time because we're calculating all the models, including validation and optimization. The last two entries here are empty, so the gradient boosted tree and support vector machine models are taking more time. That's not surprising because the gradient boosted tree is an ensemble model calculating many different trees, and the support vector machine is not an incremental model with time and space complexity involved. In the table below the graphs, we get the runtime of each model and a selection of performance matrices. If you're not sure which one to look at, then we recommend considering accuracy, but also the robust AUC, which stands for area under the curve. As I click on the rock comparison, you can nicely see the curves from which the AUC is calculated. 
To understand more about the rock curves and the different quality measures, please refer to the tutorials on validation and model identification, respectively. Now, as we switch back to the overview, we see that, so far, adding random forest is the model with the highest AUC, but also requires a multiple of the other model's runtime. For the gain of only about half a percent higher AUC, we had to pay a high price with the amount of runtime. So, the auto model feature provides a great help here for you to find the most economical approach between calculation time and performance. Before we look into the details that are provided with each model, let's first look into the general section down here. The data section is obvious, so I will move on directly to weights. This section helps you to quickly see which of the attributes were actually the most relevant for the model's predictions. In the case of our Titanic example, clearly, gender is the most dominant one, but monetary attributes immediately follow it. You can see something similar in the correlations, namely that gender and survival are comparably highly correlated as well as passenger class and fare with each other and with survival. Now here at the bottom, we can see some further helpful details about each of the models that have been chosen. For the decision tree, you get a nice chart and the confusion matrix with all performance details. In the optimal parameters, you can see which parameters, if any, have been optimized and what the best values are. The last two entries shown here are lift chart and simulator. The simulator is very helpful to run through some what-if scenarios, and it includes the option to ask the studio to perform an optimization. For example, you can ask for the following optimization. How can I maximize my chance to survive given that I'm a 40-year-old man who embarks on the voyage in Cherbourg? Now you can see that even with optimized conditions, the chance for survival, in this case, can only be increased to slightly above random chance. And since age and gender were predetermined, you would better make sure to travel in first class as the biggest supporter of a positive survival outcome. The lift chart is often used, for example, during marketing campaigns. It helps to assess the impact of using a model to identify campaign targets, compared to just sending out messages randomly. The last thing to demonstrate here is what happens if you have some examples in your data set that you want to predict. For that, we will select our customer data, which we've also been using in the other tutorials. Check out the video on data loading to find out how it's imported. As you can see, the churn label contains some missing values. We will go through the following steps here rapidly since we've just explained them. To speed things up even more, we will avoid the calculation intensive models here. While the remaining models are calculated, we can already see the predictions for our unlabeled data made by that naive Bayes model. The green and red colors help you to understand why an example was classified positive or negative. So this example here was classified as loyal, even though the customer is female, which otherwise would have been more an argument for churn. But if you look at the confidence, then this is not a very strong case. This example here, in contrast, was classified as churn, with all values across the four attributes supporting this decision with very high confidence. If you're an experienced user, then one thing you may have been asking yourself during this demo more than once is the question, what if I want to do something different than the options provided? For example, what if I want to optimize other parameters? In that case, you can simply click here on open process, and you are free to change or add anything you like with the big advantage that you won't need to start from scratch. AutoModel is a customizable and transparent feature supporting your productivity. With this, we want to end this tutorial, and we thank you very much for watching.